الرحيم الحمد لله المحمود على كل حال ونعوذ بالله من حال أهل الضلال وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم المآل أما بعد Towards the end of the last khatira, we were talking about some who are deprived from the Qur'an and we said it's tawfiq from Allah to be attached to the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that tawfiq. Attachment to the Qur'an doesn't come overnight. It takes practice and persistence. In order to taste the sweetness of the Qur'an, you need to befriend it, as we said. A true friendship, as we emphasized. You need to break the lock on the heart by befriending the Qur'an. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقَفَالُهَا Do they not have the dabbar of the Qur'an? Do they not contemplate the Qur'an? Do they not think deeply of the Qur'an? Or do their hearts have locks on them? Locks from understanding it. Hearts with locks, locks, metal, like metal, iron cast locks. Tawheed doesn't enter those hearts and kufr doesn't leave those hearts. Goodness doesn't penetrate those hearts and the evil doesn't leave those hearts. They're locked. Quran doesn't penetrate those hearts. Locked hearts are hearts that rejoice with human worldly talk, but they feel constrained when it comes to the word of Allah. Locked by sins and arrogance and bid'ah and shirk. The locks are on the hearts, not on the Quran. The Quran has no locks on it. It's open. The hearts are what are locked. It's locked so the understanding and contemplation of the Quran doesn't penetrate those hearts. You melt the locks with the brightness of Iman. Once those locks are melted off, the Quran will penetrate and seep into those hearts. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Do they not have deep thinking, tadabbur, contemplation of the Quran? Tadabbur is slightly different than understand. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Perform your salah. Understanding is perform your salah. Contemplate the deep thinking of that. Tadabbur. How does this apply to me? How's my salah? How am I applying this? How am I fulfilling this command? If the Quran was taught to a death firmly fixed, Firmly anchored, inanimate mountain, it would tremble and be humbled and torn apart and crumbled in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. But hearts of tissue don't tremble, nor do they even get affected by the word of Allah. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوًا Their hearts hardened and became like rocks or even harder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared their hearts to rocks rather than metal. Because unlike rocks, metal has the potential of softening when heated. Rocks don't. Some reached a level of hardening where there's no going back. They reached levels where there's no more softening of those hearts. Having a hard heart that doesn't soften to the words of Allah, to the commands of Allah, is an inconspicuous punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nas'alullah salama. 
فويل للقاسية قلوبهم من ذكر الله أولئك في ضلال مبين مالك بن دينار said there's no punishment bigger than having a hard heart abandoning the recitation and the meaning the tafsir and acting upon it is a disastrous recipe to attaining a hard heart may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that befriending the Quran is the solution the Quran is a missile of truth that at times penetrates hearts of disbelievers and some who don't understand the meaning or the language imagine its effect when it's contemplated with full belief and understanding I said in, in the lecture on Qiyam maybe around 10 years or so ago a common denominator among the revivers of Islam the ulama of haq, the imams of haq, the ulama, the shuhada the common denominator they had is Qiyam Qiyam is intertwined with the Quran وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ Night prayers intertwined with Quran How do you think the imams who stood against the globe were able to handle it without the attachment and bond at night time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the recitation of the Quran they would have failed miserably at the first test when one overcomes the difficulty of taking from his comfort and leisure time time to spend with the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open his heart and mind to the right path and he'll keep him steadfast on it وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ قتادة said أعزه الله لأنه كلامه عزيز Allah honored it Allah honored it قتادة said because it's the word of Allah it's the word of Allah it's عزيز lower and humble yourself to that which is honored, which is Aziz, so you can reap and attain its benefits. If you want to get the benefits of the Quran, you need to be dedicated and give the Quran from yourself. If you want to be the most upright, the most righteous, in every imaginable way, dunya and akhirah, dedicate time and effort to the Quran. إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوام أقوام The Quran guides to that which is most upright Upright in what? Upright in everything أقوام in belief أقوام in عقيدة Upright the best in everything It's the Quran أقوام the most upright in deeds The Quran Aqwam, the most upright in manners, the Quran. The teachings of the Quran lead one to being the most upright in every possible way. Listen to the verses in the Quran, describe the Quran. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li tukhrija nasa min al dhulumati ila al nur. Bi rabbihim. إلى صراط العزيز الحميم لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور to take them from the darkness to the brightness was revealed to the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to take us from the darkness to the brightness from the darkness of worshiping other than Allah to the brightness of worshiping Allah alone from the darkness of shirk and kufr to the brightness of tawheed and islam from the darkness of interfaith to the brightness of la ilaha illallah from the darkness from the darkness of your personal agonies to the brightness and happiness and ease the quran is the path and map to honor laqad anzalna ilaykum kitaban fihi dhikrukum afala ta'qilun 
فيه ذكركم ابن عباس said فيه ذكركم means your honor in the book is فيه ذكركم ابن عباس said فيه ذكركم is your honor you want honor befriend the Quran what honor دنيا آخر honor it's a cure وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين in another verse قل هو للذين آمنوا هدى وشفاء it's a cure from all types of ignorance a cure from ignorance it's a cure from the disease of shirk in kufr it's a cure from heart diseases from doubts from nifaq it's a cure from health and physical and mental ailments it's a cure it's a ruqya it's a cure for the problems of the ummah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it's a cure and it's a cure in every sense of the word on every level, in every situation, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks the truth. Why doesn't, it, why doesn't it work for us at times? We have the prescription, we have the medicine, but people don't use it or don't properly apply it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the supreme examples. But let me break it down like this. If someone's given medicine and it works for everyone, for a certain ailment, but it didn't work for him. Then he goes back to the doctor. The first question the doctor asks is, are you taking the medicine? If he says, yeah, I'm taking the medicine, are you taking it properly and accordingly? Some medicine doesn't kick in for days. You have to be persistent in taking it. Some has to be taken at certain times in certain ways. A cream that you're supposed to put on a skin infection isn't to be mixed with water and swallowed. When one alleges the Quran didn't work for him as a cure by the will of Allah, then that person needs to sit with himself and ask, is he reading and understanding the Quran? Is he acting on what he learned and applying it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to apply it? There are those who memorize and recite the Quran, but it doesn't pass their throats. So how can it work for them? يقرؤون القرآن لا يجاوز طراقيهم. There will be those who recite the Quran, not just recite. يقرؤون constantly, fresh on their tongues. يقرؤون. It won't go deeper than their collarbones or above their throats. It wasn't properly understood. And if it wasn't properly understood, how can you attain the benefits of it? How can one practice it? And therefore the conclusion is that the recitation is rendered useless. If you want your children to be Imams of the Muslimin, raise them on the Quran. Not just memorizing, even though memorizing is extremely essential and I've emphasized that many times. If you raise them only on reading and memorizing and beautifying their voices and showing off with that, not knowing the meaning and not acting upon it, they'll grow up to make their parents a fortune and attain some fame, but they'll end up being among the first to be tossed into Jahannam as the Hadith in Sahih Muslim states. وَقَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ لِيُقَالْ هُوَ قَارَ فَقَدْ قِيلْ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ حَتَّى أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ They'll get tossed in Jahannam on their faces if they show off with the Qur'an. If that's their mere purpose of reciting it. If you raise them on reading and memorizing and implementing the Qur'an as the Sahaba were raised, read, memorize, understand, act upon it, then it's likely they'll die young or go to prison or be leaders of the globe. All of that is the same to us. 
All of that is equal in our, in our eyes, so long as we live by the Quran. What's important is to live on Tawheed, acting upon Tawheed from that Quran. Once they live on it, they will raise their rank and their parents' rank in the Akhirah. And that's what matters. Illuminate the hearts of your children by memorizing, understanding, and acting upon the Quran. And there will be nothing that can extinguish that brightness by the will of Allah. When the ulama of the haqq from the past the globe fought their work. Century after century. Force after force. But they couldn't extinguish their work. Why? Because they illuminated their work with the brightness from the Quran. When you illuminate your life and heart and work and your children with the brightness from the Quran, nothing can extinguish that by the will of Allah. What I'm saying is actually what the Salaf said in a one-liner. They put it, they made it simple and brief. Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Umar, and Abdul Rahman al-Sulami all mentioned it in different wordings. They said, كَانَ الرَّجُلُ مِنَّا إِذَا تَعَلَّمَ عَشْرَ آيَاتٍ لَمْ يُجَاوِزَهُنْ حَتَّى يَعْرِفَ مَعَانِيَهُنْ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِنْ The companions would learn to recite 10 verses from the Quran. From the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They wouldn't go to the next verses until they understood those verses. And they acted upon them. And in some narration they said, we learn the knowledge and to act upon it. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu ma added to that, he said, there came people who recited the Quran from the Fatiha to the end of it. This is, imagine this, this is during his time. He said, there came a time where people began to recite the Quran from the Fatiha to the end of it, not knowing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, nor what he refrained from. And then he said, وَيَنْثُرُهُ نَثْرَ الدَّقِلْ He compared some of the recitation of the people during his time to Nathra Daqil. A Daqil is dry, hard dates. When they're taking off branches, they come off easily and quickly, making tapping noises when they fall onto one another. وَيَنْثُرُهُ Nathra Daqil, meaning they recite the Quran fast, not knowing what they read. With the sound of the recitation, like the sound of a Daqil, the tapping noises of the hard dates when they fall onto one another. Okay. Imagine if he lived to see the situation today. With this, we'll stop, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.